About my person, I'm working with JDK uh, since JDK 1.0, and I'm a freelancer. This is good to know. So I'm Java champion. Doesn't mean I'm totally independent from Sun. Someone asked me whether I'm working for Sun. Nothing. I'm freelancer. Freelancer is something like one-man show. So no vacation, just work and just Java, something like this, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, and uh, actually, I didn't like some stuff in J2E, so I. Um, so I joined um, Java E6, EGP 3.1, and JPA 2.0 expert groups and tried to change the world. And um, some means it, it worked, yeah, sometimes. Um, yeah, I wrote some books, about six or seven, in, all in German. So it's worthless for you. The last as well, pictures are great, you know, but the text is worthless, German. But the next one would be cool because it's in, uh, for US. So I, I think Polish is very hard to me to write Polish text, but US will be better. So why this talk? You see I'm a little bit interactive. Um, I'm doing consulting work with J2E. And what I noticed, in, at least in Germany and Europe, that always every architecture looks like this. So it is accident with a whiteboard. I had no idea it is here, but it's perfect. So you've got a database. And um, people obsessed about abstraction in Germany. So if you provide an architecture with only two layers, yeah, you get lost, you get fired as architect. So about five layers, it became good and expensive. <laughs> so you have uh, JDBC is obvious, right? Then you have Hibernate, which is probably obvious. Then you have JPA, yeah? And then fun starts, like okay. Because JPA, you know, you are how somehow tightly coupled to objects and I don't know, to the relational databases. And could be in future, LDAP, flat files, or something like this. So we have to provide, I don't know, DAO, no? data access object. This is not enough. Hibernate objects are persistent. And we provide value objects right there to decouple. So it is a common pattern in Germany. You know? So um, then we have service layer here, which uses these objects. The problem is the client needs other objects. So we introduce client objects on this side. You know. And then we have composite service here, which composes different value objects to one composite object, which is transferred to Kipalian <laughs> objects. So, and uh, at the last two years in my, uh, in my consultant work, what I did, I just delete about 80% of layers. And everyone was happy. They said, cool, yeah, you have great knowledge, great experience. And what I actually did, I asked my customer, what happened in the past in case that you're, uh, okay. German customers, or I never did a, I had a very short projects in Katowice. It was a porting from uh, Java Virtual Machine or Linux to re real-time Linux. It was perfect experience, but it's only a very, very, very short project. So uh, when I, when I, in German and European customers, or so Switzerland, Austria, and so forth, what happens? They only see the UI. So every feature request is something like, I need a field here, one more field. What happens there? You have to extend client object, composite object, service object, DAO, database, and, and all the, the layers. So actually, abstraction became worthless. Okay? So, and this is a little bit of my talk just to be more pragmatic. And interesting enough, if you, if you are pragmatic, uh, you can be uh, very, very productive with J2E or Java E6 or 5 even more. You are using J2E? Who, who use it? J2, 1.3, 1.4? Who, who uses Java E5? Hey, great. Yeah, cool. And Java 6, no, no? Java 6? It's not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> you are from expert group? <laughs> OK. It's a very interactive uh, cloud, yeah. EGB 3.1. So if you don't know this, it's just basically a pojo. And the funny story is in Germany, they, people don't like EGBs because they are heavyweight. Um, Heavyweight doesn't, uh, actually no one knows what, does, what it means. So heavyweight is something like too big or something like this. The truth is, actually you have to just to provide at stateless and local annotation. And uh, in Glassfish, it is something like JBoss, but uh, it's released yet. JBoss, we have to wait some quarters until it's released, but it will come eventually, perhaps in Java 8, seven days or something like this. Um, in Glassfish, the whole EGB container is about 400 kilobytes. Not megabytes, but kilobytes. I, you know WebSphere? There's a splash screen of WebSphere or something like this. It comes up, OK? Um, so it is a very, very lean. Of course, it's not complete now, but it's very lean. 
And my observation was actually EGB3 are, EGB3 dry here, EGB3 are much better. Trzy, EGB, fasole trzy, no? So, uh, lepsze, better, yeah? Then EGB2 all, and even, I don't know, some mix from spring juice and everything like this. Um, and even better, there's the only one vendor neutral framework I know. So you can, for, for instance, we had some huge projects with a commercial, commercial server, and the commercial server was bought by another commercial company, and licensing changed. With Java 5, we were able to switch without effort from, EGB th from this commercial server to Glassfish or JBoss. You know, XML is dead, it's gone. All in, in the last two years, there was no XML in my projects, except very short, persistent XML, so it is about, I don't know, five lines of code. Um, so you can, crud, you can provide even lean applications very, very fast. Um, so you have one interface and one class that is. In EGB 3.1, you can even, it's just a class is enough. So even the interface is not needed. So it's, it can, you can do this, it's perhaps, you know, too simplistic, but, but, but you can do this. XML deployment descriptors are gone. So there is a, the expert group members in EGB3 uh, stolen the idea from Ruby on Rails land and say, okay, there is no configuration required. If you need some configuration, provide that uh, in annotations or afterwards with XML. And this is a great story. You can override with XML um, Java annotations, right? Uh, if you have some questions, just ask in Polish, German, or English. So Polish would be dangerous, but we can try it, you know? <laughs> so um, questions so far? No questions. Um, so uh, performance overhead of session beans, about 3%. So I measured plain Pojo with servlet and cascading uh, to EGB3, and there was about one millisecond invo overhead. Invocation overhead is nothing. It's absolutely nothing. And um, what do, you, what, do you, what do you also gain with EGB3 or EGB2 even is the, um, monitoring data. So you know JSR77, monitoring and management. If you deploy something on the server, you see what happens. How often certain methods are invoked and, and, some of, uh, and how often other methods are invoked. If you have an POJO framework on Tomcat, you see probably that the method POST was invoked one million times and to get only two million times or, or half a million times, but you see nothing. Yeah? And even this is additional added value, but no developer cares. This is operation stuff, no development. And this is one of the pro uh, problems with EGBs. Okay, um, so transactions. So um, you have not too much time, but uh, I'm convinced that you, you always need transactions, even for, even for reads. If you are reading without transactions, you will have you see a snapshot of the database in worst case. So you will see, you know, on, on the stock market, all transactions will be probably roll back in the next moment. So you need transactions somehow. And what EGB3 do, or EGB2, is uh, something like this. They associate with the transaction a thread and or resources. So what does it mean if I, if I go to an EGB and this EGB started in a thread and I access the persistence several times in one transaction, I get the same reference back over and over again. If you do it with my own framework, I have about 50 copies of one object from the database, you know? There is a huge, huge benefit of transactional persistence over homegrown persistence because you are working with references, no values, okay? 